Oh. And I'm going to jump back to Atlantis. Okay. And a quote from Plato. So now this is, um, this again is the uh, the old priests talking to Solon. He says, "Many great and wonderful deeds are recorded of your state in our histories." That he's talking about this proto-Athenian state that allied with the, the the Egyptians to fight off this incursion of this great Atlantean empire, right? See, he says, many great and wonderful deeds are recorded in your state, in our histories. But one of them exceeds all the rest in greatness and valor. For these histories tell of a mighty power, which unprovoked made an expedition against the whole of Europe and Asia, and to which your city put an end. And here's the key passage right here. This power came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean. For in those days, the Atlantic was navigable. Okay? Very clear. Mm -hmm. Came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, in Plato's day, the Atlantic Ocean was no different than our Atlantic Ocean today. Right. Now, listen to this. And there was an island situated in front of the straits, which are by you called the Pillars of Heracles. The island was larger than Libya and Asia put together and was the way to other islands. And from these, you might pass to the whole of the opposite continent, which surrounds the true ocean. Look back up there again. You, We're looking back at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Yes. The Atlantic Ocean up by the... Uh, now, he's talking about sailing west from the Pillars of Heracles, and there were islands right there in that light gray area so that would have been, listen, um, there was an island situated in the fronts of the straits, which are called by you the Pillars of Heracles, and was the way to other islands, and from these you might pass to the whole of the opposite continent. And there it is, right over there. It's almost as if he's saying these Egyptians knew about the presence of North America. Right. Yeah. Which surrounds the true ocean. Because, as he says, uh, for this sea, which is within the Straits of Heracles, which he's talking about the Mediterranean, is only a harbor, having a narrow entrance. But that other is a real sea, and the surrounding land may be most truly called a boundless continent. Uh, if you go now to slide number 89, Austin... Okay, so here we have Straits of Gibraltar. Okay, we're looking at the Gulf of Cadiz. Yes. Okay. With the Africa on the bottom connecting to the Iberian Peninsula on top and the Straits of Gibraltar going right through the center. Now roll forward one slide. Now take a look, uh, and you'll see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is very prominent. Right. Okay, and it's it's really it's uh, it's one of the weakest areas of co of crust on the entire planet. Why is that? Uh, because it's a spreading center. It's where okay. it's where crust is being born. It's the origin of the crust. That's a huge crack there, and molten uh, lava issues up from the crack and then spreads laterally, and it's this that's driving the motion of the the. Uh, tectonic plates, at least within the framework of plate tectonics. Okay. Okay, so now listen to what the priest goes on to say. Now, in this island, island is the word, of Atlantis, there was a great and wonderful empire which had rule over the whole island and several others and over parts of the continent. So he's very much distinguishing between the continent... And the island. And the island. But then he's saying, they had rule over the whole island and several others. So it was not limited to a single island, but then, uh, and over parts of the continent. And furthermore, the men of Atlantis had subjected the parts of Libya within the columns of Her Heracles as far as Egypt. So they would have, if that was the case, they would have been colonizing the area of northwestern Africa, which is now Morocco, what is now Libya, including probably what is now Mauritania. So if you assume that, it might have not at all been implausible to assume that 
you know, Atlantean explorers could have traversed the area of the reach at structure, right? Uh, then this vast power gathered into one, endeavored to subdue at a blow our country and yours and the whole region within the straits. Okay. And then, Salon, your country shone forth in the excellence of her virtue and strength among all mankind, for she was first in courage and military skill and was the leader of the Hellenes. Um, I'm going to jump in the sake of times. So then they have this big war, um, and led by the, the, the uh, peoples within the Straits of Gibraltar around the Mediterranean, led by these proto-Athenians, freely liberated all the others who dwell within the limits of Heracles. So he's describing a very explicit. You've got this power comes forth out of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. It rules over a series of islands. There's one main island, rules over the series of islands, comes within to the Mediterranean, which he describes as just a harbor compared to the real ocean, right. subdues all of these nations, and then the proto-Athenians manage to organize them all. They fight off and they liberate all those others who now, who dwell within the limits of, of Heracles. And then afterwards, there occurred violent earthquakes and floods and a single day uh, night of rain. All your warlike men in a body sank into the earth. So in other words, he's referring now to something that's happening in the Greek peninsula, right? And the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared and was sunk Beneath the sea. Now, to me, that is pretty explicit. You got an island, there were earthquakes, it sank beneath the sea. Right. There's no ambiguity there. And that part, uh, that part of uh, where the eye of Africa is, that was never completely underwater. No. Right. Not since probably Cretaceous times, because oh, okay. there are Cretaceous limestones right. there, which shows that it was then underwater. Right, okay. Like 60 million... 70 million, 80 million years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, great. Now, Jimmy is absolutely right when he talks about water flowing over. And I, I discussed that in my discussion of the recat structure, mm -hmm. that there is evidence that there was these tremendous floods flowing over. And that's probably why the structure is exposed as it is. Mm. Because there, these floods would have ripped away the bedrock concealing it. Okay. And expose the core of this ancient plume. Pl yeah. Um, Volcanic plume. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's so much here we could get into. Yeah, it's 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 lengthy. It's a, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. And a anybody who finds this captivating and they want to learn more about this, I highly recommend you go to episode nine of Randall's podcast. Well, that's the one that specifically addresses the recap. The recap, recap structure. Well, there's yeah. many episodes that talk about it. I think I've got five episodes leading up to that. Six, maybe. A couple hours each. 